Hello and welcome, folks. Welcome to uh, continuing our discussion forum um, on knowledge on Buddhism transmitted to us by the Chinese Grandmaster Ching Kong. Um, for those who may be wondering who is Master Ching Kong, Master Ching Kong is very, 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 very famous. He's just like the Dalai Lama uh, or Master Sing Yun. Or for the women, a, we have a woman Buddha um, um, in Taiwan as well. Uh, she started the Zuchi Foundation. Uh, these are all very, very great Buddhist authorities. So the point I'm making is uh, Ching Kong Master, Grand Master Ching Kong, is in his 90s. Now he was born 1927. Uh, he is one of the great Buddhas of our times, one of the uh, Buddhas of world renown, known worldwide. He lives in Australia, sometimes in Hong Kong. Sometimes he was also a United States citizen for quite a while. He lived in the United States before he moved to Australia. You know, he, he spreaded a lot of Amitabha Buddha uh, teachings. Uh, he's really made a lot of contribution to Buddhism. He's among the great Buddhist authorities of our times. That's Master Ching Kong. You can uh, type Ching Kong on Google or on Yahoo to find out more about the great Grandmaster of uh, Buddhist uh, teachings. Well, welcome back to our discussion forum. Um, any questions, you should reach me by email on c.aburime at hotmail.com or color college, color spelled British, color college at hotmail.com. Um, let's continue our discussion. So, um, the Buddhist educational organization in China, Buddhist education is based on filial piety, says Master Ching Kong, as is the Chinese culture. Prior to the introduction of Buddhism to China, filial piety was the pillar of society and was supported by the wise men of ancient China. When Buddhist monks from India came to China and started to discuss Buddhism with governmental officials, it was immediately apparent to everyone that Buddhism shared numerous similarities with the indigenous Confucian traditions. Consequently, the government embraced them, as the government of China embraced Buddhism from authorities in India who came to China and requested that the monks, they were monks, that the monks stay in China permanently. They granted these monks from India permanent residency in China. The first two monks who came to China were called Moton and Chufarian. Moton and Chufarian were received by the Honglu Su, which is equivalent to our present foreign ministry or state department. In China, that was known as Honglu Su. Su was designated as a ministry of the government. The chief of Honglu Su is equivalent to a foreign minister or secretary of the state. However, Honglu Su could only receive foreign guests temporarily. In order to allow these guests to stay permanently, the Emperor of China added another ministry, Bai Ma Su, to take charge of Buddhist education. Originally, the Su SI, spelled SI, had nothing to do with a temple, but merely denoted a ministry of the imperial court. Now it denotes a temple. In contemporary Chinese, uh, it denotes a temple in contemporary Chinese. So there were two ministries in charge of education, the uh, Li Bu, managed by the Prime Minister of China, which was in charge of uh, the traditional Confucian educational system. This organization served the same function until the early 1900s, as the Emperor of China had given uh, enormous support to the Bai Mas, Buddhist education rapidly spread throughout 
China. In many instances, it had even far exceeded the efforts to educate people than the traditional education, education system of Libu. Consequently, there may not have been a Confucian or Manfucian school in every village, but there was a Si everywhere. Again, the Buddhist Si or temple used to be an educational institution and did not perform religious ceremonies at all, at all. Unlike what often takes place in contemporary temples nowadays, very unfortunately. Another important mission for the original Si was Sutra translation. The scale of the translation effort is hard to imagine today. During the seventh century, the famous monk, Suan Tsuang, had supervised 600 scholars, 600 scholars under his authority in sutra translation. Prior to this, a monk named uh, Kumaraja had a translation team of about 400 scholars, 400 researchers. Therefore, the Si was a large governmental organization. You can imagine it was just like a university uh, will be nowadays. Unfortunately, it was completely transformed into a place to deal with superstition and spirits around 200 years ago. Its educational characteristics totally disappeared, which was truly pretty regretful. Folks, I'll be right back. Thanks. <laughs>